Thank you for hosting us today on this beautiful campus of Ulster University. I came here in 91 in this neighborhood, and you couldn't have a glass building like this here in this neighborhood. I don't think. I don't think it would have uh, stood up very well. But things are changing. Lord Mayor Black uh, and Secretary of State of Northern Ireland, Heaton Harris, thank you for the welcome to Belfast. And uh, Mr. Speaker, and leaders of Northern uh, Ireland's leading five political parties. I was honored to welcome you to the White House a few weeks ago, and, uh, and it's wonderful to see all of you again today. Supporting the people of Northern Ireland, protecting the peace, preserving the Belfast Good Friday Agreement is a priority for Democrats and Republicans alike in the United States, and that is unusual today because we've been very divided on our parties. This is something that brings Washington together. It brings America together. I spoke about this with Northern Ireland's political leaders, as well as the Taoiseach and our St. Patrick's Day celebration at the White House. It's been a key focus for me throughout my career. Today's Belfast is the beating heart of Northern Ireland and is poised to drive unprecedented economic opportunity and investment from communities across the UK, across Ireland, and across the United States. The simple truth is that peace and economic opportunity go together. Peace and economic opportunity go together. In the 25 years since the Good Friday Agreement, Northern Ireland's gross domestic product has literally doubled. Doubled. And I predict to you, if things continue to move in the right direction, it'll more than triple. There are scores of major American corporations wanting to come here, wanting to invest. Many have already made homes in Northern Ireland, employing over 30,000 people. And in just the past decade, American business has generated almost $2 billion in investment in the region. $2 billion. Today, Northern Ireland is a churn of creativity, art, poetry, theater. Some of our favorite television shows and movies are filmed here, <laughs> as you know. Now, I know the UK's departure from the European Union created complex challenges here in Northern Ireland. And I encourage the leaders of the UK and the EU to address the issues in a way that serve Northern Ireland's best interests. I deeply appreciate the personal leadership of Prime Minister Sunak and European Commissioner von der Leyen to reach an agreement. The Windsor framework addresses the practical realities of Brexit and the essentials and its essential step to ensuring hard-earned peace and progress of the Good Friday Agreements, is that they're preserved and strengthened. And as a friend, I hope it's not too presumptuous for me to say that I believe democratic institutions established through the Good Friday Agreement remain critical to the future of Northern Ireland. It's a decision for you to make, not for me to make, but it seems to me they're related. An effective, devolved government that reflects the people of Northern Ireland and is accountable to them. A government that works to find ways through hard problems together is going to draw even greater opportunity in this region. So I hope the Assembly and the Executive will soon be restored. That's a judgment for you to make, not me, but I hope it happens. Along with the institutions that facilitate North-South and East-West relations, all of which are vital pieces of the Good Friday Agreement. But the lesson of the Good Friday Agreement is this. In times when things seem fragile or easily broken, that is when hope and hard work are needed the most. That's when we must make our theme repair. Repair. So let's celebrate 25 extraordinary years by recommitting to renewal, repair, by making this exceptional peace the birthright of every child in Northern Ireland for all the days to come. That's what we should be doing. God willing, you'll be able to do it. Thank you all for listening, and may God bring you the peace we need. Thank you.